Welcome, New Life family. Welcome any guests. I don't think we have any guests today, but we're glad you're here. We're excited. Um, these are not guests. These are family. You ain't no guests. You've been here once. Um, but Crystal and Anthony is, is friends with uh, Jordan and Lindsay. They go to church together up in the, up in the Great White North. Um, North Georgia, that is. Uh, but uh, they're here today to lead us in worship and just worship with us. And uh, I, I, we've talked a couple times during the week, and uh, I said, Jordan, I said, God's been moving in our church in a powerful way. And, you know, y'all know how we do worship. We have the words and we play it through the, through the computer. Today will be different. It's going to be live, and it's going to be anointed, and we're just we're going to sing songs that we know. But I told him, I said, I don't know what to expect. I said, you know, come prepared. So he's got like 20 songs. We're not going to do them all unless. I told Deb this morning, I said, what are we going to do today? She goes, what? I said, what are we going to do at 3 o'clock in the afternoon if we're still laid out on the floor? Quiet? And she goes, we're going to just stay with it. Can I tell you, revival's here. It's already across our land. I got a report the other day, or something on Facebook, there's 18 different locations that have reported revival. And let me tell you where one of them was, Jackson High School in Jackson, Georgia. Steve was playing a video for me earlier out in the foyer, and just people worshiping, just worshiping God. Just You could just feel it. And I said, oh, is that Ashbury? He goes, no, it's in front of Sam's Club in Alabama. God don't care where he moves as long as we let him. <laughs> I told my wife I was going to say something during my message, but I'm going to say it now. We can all get together. We can load up. We can get the van fixed. We can load up. We can rent another van, and we can all go to Ashbury College. We can go spend three or four days there. Who, if everybody's ready, okay? But if we have the same heart we have now, it ain't going to matter if we go or not. I just say this, change my heart and come here, Lord. Well, three of you are in agreement. So I'll get the rest of you on board. We'll be all right. Stand to your feet this morning. We're going to get ready to worship God. We're here with, on his agenda, on his means, on his purpose. We're not here because... Jordan has a certain thing to do. We're here because we want to, we want, we want to, we want to encounter today. I'm just, I'm excited for what God's put in my heart to share with you, but I'm more excited to see what He might do before that, <laughs> uh, or what no, what He will do before that. So if you'll open your heart this morning. One phrase you need to understand. I know people are all over the place talking about, oh, we need revival so we can repent. Repentance brings revival. Repent first and it'll show up. We don't need a revival to repent. We need to repent to get revival. Get your hearts pure. Get your hearts right before him and worship in spirit and truth this morning. Father, we've come and gathered in your name. We have come to lift up your name, exalt you in this place. We've come to worship. We've come to expect you this morning to move in the most powerful way. We've come to expect you to have your way. God, meet us here. Don't just visit, inhabit this place with your presence this morning. God, move upon your people. There's many not here today that are sick. We're going to pray for them at the a, right a time, but... Lord, we ask you to move through Facebook and move through this house. Touch your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hey, this first song, y'all know what we do. We meet and greet. We shake hands, hug necks. It's only going to matter if it's live. We do the same thing. Welcome, everybody, and let's, let's worship.
Father God, we just thank you this morning, Lord. God, that we can come into your house, Father, we can worship you. God, no matter what we've been going through this past week, Lord, but God, that we can just worship you, Father, with everything that we have. And God, we're so grateful for you, Lord.
try to deter us from the thought of worshiping Him and what it truly is. It's something as simple as me misplacing my headphones this morning and not being able to find them. And the enemy said, ha ha, I got you. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Just one. 
there's somebody in here, and it may be more than one somebody, there's somebody really dealing with some stuff in this song. I don't know if it's fear. I don't know if it's anxiety. Um, depression is, is the one that's been illuminated to me. So if you've been battling depression or fear or anxiety or maybe all three of those things, um, I would just say do something to get out of your comfort zone. Jesus is asking you to do something to release it. He's asking you to do something you've never done before. Maybe you've never lifted your hands. Maybe you've never sang out. Maybe you've never shouted. Maybe you've just never called on the name of Jesus. Maybe you've never come down to the altar. Maybe you've never ran before. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but you know. Jesus knows there's something that he has for you. He has an assignment for this house today. He has it today. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Hallelujah. Don't miss it. Jesus, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear. Over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak
Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Yes, you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That song says, I speak Jesus over my family. I speak Jesus over doubt. I speak Jesus over fear. I speak Jesus over anxiety. It's already been said. I speak Jesus over concerns. I speak Jesus over your health this morning. I speak Jesus over over the enemy this morning. It's at the name of Jesus that demons have to flee, church. It's at the name of Jesus cancer has to obey. It's at the name of Jesus that all darkness has to disappear. It's at the name of Jesus that man is made whole. There's no other name by which under heaven that man can be saved. I speak the name of Jesus over my family. There's no other name. There's no greater name. There's no name that can be spoken. There's no other name. The Bible says that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess His name. His name. I don't know where they are in worship, but we go back a little bit of that I speak Jesus somewhere. And I think some of you need to get up. You need to speak it. You need to verbally speak that name over whatever your circumstance might be, whatever your situation might be. You need to get on your feet. You need to speak that name. You ain't going to get too loud in this place. You don't need to be silent anymore. The enemy's had us silent too long. It's about time the church gave her roar so the enemy knows we mean business this morning. We can't be so timid and so shy and so concerned. What are they going to think about me? I'm not going to think anything. If you just get up and shout his name at the top of your lungs, Come on! Come on, Jordan. Speak his name. Speak that name, church. I speak Jesus. Over every heart. Over every heart. 
chosen.
Jesu, Jesu. Hallelujah. In Solomon chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible talks about the north wind blowing to the south into the garden. I believe what God is doing right now, I believe the wind of heaven is blowing on the garden of his people. I believe his breath has went forth. We, we, I told you earlier, we're reading about revival after revival after revival. And I, I've got something to share about some, one of them here in just a few minutes. But the first one that started was in a Methodist college in Kentucky. I said a Methodist college. Pentecost came out of the Methodist movement, by the way. But the Methodist movement right now is in shackles. They're split. They're dividing their denomination over ordaining homosexuals and lesbians be behind the pulpit. There's a group that says that's not biblical, that's not God, we don't want it. So it's interesting to me that God poured out a revival on a Methodist college in a time of a big split in their denomination. They met for prayer on a Wednesday morning, the, the students. Some of the faculty was in the room in the chapel. A young student got up behind on the platform and he just shared a little brief D on, on love and repentance. And for the last several weeks, God is still pouring out his spirit on that place. I believe the wind of God Chris, you couldn't have sang anything any better than what I feel blowing through this building right now. Is the wind of heaven is blowing over his church. Blowing, I've, I've said this to you many times. I don't believe in a worldwide revival. I, I don't. But I believe God's going to pour it out to hungry people that are seeking it. I believe he's going to show up to people and hearts that are desiring him to be there that don't. I'm going to get into my message if I don't stop. Church, are you hungry enough? 
How hungry are you? That if God fell in this place for 30 minutes, for an hour, for two hours, for two days, three days, for a week, would we tarry in his presence? I'm not saying shut down your life and don't live. I'm talking go refresh, come back. Go refresh and come back. 30 minutes after, after that chapel service was over, students were still around the altar praying. People got wind of it and started coming back into the building. Just the other day I read they opened their fourth building. And then I read, I saw a video this morning, Jordan. And now in the courts of some of the buildings in the yard, <laughs> they're having revival again. Steve, I don't know what you have, but I want you, to, if you have something, I want you to share it. But before you do, I want to do something. I want, you know, what well, you could come on, because I, I want prayer. We're going to pray, but we're going to pray different this morning. Because I really feel in my spirit. Steve comes up here and shares some powerful things. Last Sunday was a powerful illustration. Powerful. And God, and he don't share nothing unless God gives it to him. And I believe that, and I trust this man with what he's about to do. But I'm gonna, we're going to do something a little different this morning than bringing you up here to pray for you. Because I really believe what God wants is for us to pray for one for another. I believe in James chapter 5, anoint their head with oil. If you want to come get anointing oil, and you wanna, but we're going to pray for one another. We're not going to make it elaborate. We're not, I'm not trying to be somebody else, church. Trying to follow what the Holy Spirit wants done in this house. And a lot of times when we're up here and you come up here, even though he don't, I'm going to get Steve to pray for me because, boy, he prays well. Sometimes you need to pray for somebody and they'll get more out of it than what you could ever get from us praying for you. We'll still lay hands on you if you want us to, but we're going to pray for each other. My, you know, we're not going to come up front. We're going we're gonna to stay right where you are. You're going to find somebody, and we're going to pray. We're going to connect, and we're going to pray. I don't know what to pray, Pastor. Yes, you will. Steve, share what you got to share. Good morning. Facebook, find an altar. <laughs> come on. Woo! Coffee on. table, foot of your bed, couch, find an altar. God wants us on our knees, He wants us on our face. Shut up. Because we was getting ready for church this morning. My wife and I were getting ready on the opposite ends of the house. Our dog was sitting there at the entrance to the bathroom. I'm getting ready. He just, he's just as sweet as he can be, just looking and watching. I'm shaving and he's watching. I said, man, that's just sweet. I went in there and I, and I got him a treat. And I gave him that treat. He hadn't done anything special. He was just being there. God says, if man can get good gifts, <laughs> imagine what I can do. God has a gift in this house this morning for everyone that walked in the door. Is it a Cadillac? Probably not. New house? Maybe. But if you came in the door this morning anxious, the enemy's trying to use your past to bring you down. He's got a gift for you this morning. It's called freedom. Oh. If you've been bound up, I don't care alcohol, pornography, I don't care what it is, he has a gift for you this morning. It is deliverance. If you've been bound up in frustration, the world is just closing in on you. The enemy is just trying to squeeze you down. He's got a gift of peace for you this morning. The altars are open. For everyone in this place, these altars are open. And they will be till pastor says close them. I'm telling you this morning, God truly has something for you this morning. If you're sitting beside somebody, you know there's something going on in their life, cover them. 
Just turn right next to them and pray for them. Cover them and pray for them. If you feel like you need prayer for something, then come on up. We'll pray for you too. But I'm telling you this morning, God's trying to. I told Pastor the other day, I said, it's like every time I get up here, the word I hear is repentance. Yes. Repentance, repentance, yes, repentance. Yes, yes, yes. We're not trying to showboat something. We're not trying to get something started. We're just trying to do what the Spirit of God is telling us to do. And He has reasons for that. I want you praying for each other this morning. But if you have a need that's greater than anything you think you can stand, we want to pray for you as well. Take this opportunity. Altars are open. Pray for somebody. Or come up here and get you some prayer. Either way you want to do it. If you need to, find somebody, go to them. No matter who it is, find somebody, go to them. And just pray. Just, just, if you need to come to the altar, come up front. But I just want you to go find somebody, connect with somebody, and pray for somebody. Whatever way it needs to be done, I want you to just find somebody and pray for them. If you have to pray for two people, pray for two people. It really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Father, speak over my brother right now. God, I pray for an anointing of
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Yes, Lord. Cover with your peace, God. Cover with your peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Saturate her body, her mind, her soul, her spirit with the loving peace of God. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's your peace, Lord. Overflow. Overflow in your peace. Overflow in your peace. Overflow in your peace. There's that laughing. There's that peace. There's that peace. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In your grace, I Thank you, Lord. The greatest of all romance. Yes, Lord. Love of God. Love yes, Lord. The Savior. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The presence of God has filled this place this morning. He didn't just come to, just to come. He's come to do a work in his people. The revivals we're reading about, seeing about, hearing about, it's not just for just to have something to do it's because God's doing a work in these latter days when Joel prophesied in the last days I put my spirit upon all flesh it was confirmed on the day of Pentecost in the upper room when Peter said this is that that Joel spoke about it has arrived and I want to tell you church it has never stopped some may say, well, you know, this is, a, this is that outpouring. I'm going to tell you, from the day of Pentecost to now, it's been poured out. It's now being manifested back to where it belongs. It's now being in the hearts of his children, his sons, and his daughters. It's now being fulfilled once again. It has never stopped. It has never stopped. There's a sweet presence in this house. There's a powerful anointing in this place. And I know God has done some work. I know God has done some amazing work. Hallelujah. 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 Tongues, interpretation, gifts of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you this morning. Not just for your visit, but for your spoken word to us. That you have spoken to us in such a powerful way. In such a powerful way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we you know there's a sovereignty in this house where Lord is just it's just 
trying to be real with some folks. There's some steps that we need to take. There's order that needs to be fulfilled. God's move upon his people can't be orchestrated by music or sound or words. It's only orchestrated by a heart that's repentant and receptive of his spirit. I really feel, church, that we've played games for too long. We went through motions. We went through protocols. (laughs) We followed guidelines. And God is saying it's time to follow him. I know, I know there's tithes and offerings to do, but we'll probably do that at the end of service. If y'all want to get a chair and have a seat, you're not done, but you might want to rest for a minute. You can get a chair and put it up there. Or you can sit right there. Stay where you are. Pastor, are we done worship? I don't know. I don't have any notes this morning. I have a few scriptures, but I I don't have any notes. But I want to read you something. Before I say anything, I want to read you something. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of ridicule, a lot of persecution, a lot of attack coming against Asbury College. I just read an article where two very prominent known ministers are trying to make their way into that place. And I'm praying God don't let them because they do, they're going to mess it up. Because both of them are false prophets. Pastor, that's bold. No, it's real. They're both false. They have no business being. The only agenda they have to be there is to publicize themselves. This is something, and I don't know if I mean you've been reading things or seeing things, Asbury College has not published anything about themselves. It's all being published by other people. Somebody wrote this article from the school. Prominent ministers and famous gospel singers have been calling the university asking to lend their services. They are politely being, but firmly being told, you can come like anyone else. If you find a seat in the back of the auditorium, you're welcome to worship with us. But we don't want church as usual. Not the agendas, not the programs, and not the showboating. Come on. The simple worship and meeting will continue to be led by a humble group of students under the direction of the Holy Spirit. Basically, the response has been, don't try to hijack this sovereign move of God and make it about you. This is how you steward a real revival. That's why this, is, that's why this movement has broke out in a little bitty chapel that don't have pretty furniture, don't have pretty carpet, don't have pretty walls. It has, still has pews. It has an old-style platform. still has an altar, uh, a, a choir loft. They haven't changed it in many, many, many years. God's not limited to a space, church. He's not limited to a time. He don't need elaborate buildings to move in. He needs a heart that wants to say, I want revival. You can be on the corner of, 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 of 1941 and Zebulon Road and have revival if you really want it. So they're not allowing these people to come. And it's not because they're being arrogant or being proud. They don't want nobody to stop a sovereign move of God. Over our history of our world, we've, we've had revivals recorded and taped. Some, some were taped on video, some were not because they were, times they didn't have those things. They were write, written about. 
There was a revival that took place from a church of a group of people that prayed and fasted for over three years. Their prayer meeting started out with about 300, 450 people, whittled down to about 150. Out of the 150 people, they sought the good Lord. They continued to pray. On Father's Day, at Brownsville Assembly in Pensacola, Florida, an evangelist came to preach a one-day sermon, a Father's Day message. For years, the power of God filled that place. The Brownsville Revival. I got to go to that revival, not because I drove down there to go. I was visiting there. I used to live there, and I wanted to take my wife there and show her some places where I'd lived. And <clears throat> we, got, we went into that revival. We stood in line to get in. We found a seat just enough for our, little, our group that was with us, my mom and my kids and some other relatives. We found a, a, a seat on the back. The way that church was made, it was kind of fanned out. And they had stairs going up the side to the balcony. The balcony was packed. The front was packed. There was one row we were able to sit on together. The other people were standing in the room only. They actually had video screens outside in the parking lot. People were standing out in the grass. Before we did <laughs> live stream, they were already doing it live outside. And that revival, that Sunday, the pastor of that church at that particular time was praying. Brother Hill got up to start preaching. I don't even know what message he preached, but he started to preach. And he couldn't really, get, really couldn't get preaching good because the power of God was already moving. And, the, and the, beside that church, down the, the aisles of that church, on the, on the side, around the platform, around the back behind the platform, was offices and a choir room and things. And it was a hallway, very lengthy hallway. I've been in that church. You live across the street from it. You've been in that church many times. I knew, I knew the hallways they were talking about. And in that hallway... Pastor said he sounded what sounded like thousands and thousands upon horses running full gallop down that hallway. He said he looked to both his left and right. He didn't see horses, but a wind blew that place and set it on fire. Miracle after miracle, deliverance, drugs, alcohol, pornography, prostitutes coming in. Home drug addicts that lived on the street were coming in. People were being set free. Pastors were being delivered. Church people were being saved. They'd been sitting in church for 20 years going through the motions. The conviction power of the Holy Spirit was so strong and so real. And they said sometimes it felt like it was tangible. We went that night that we went, and I'm telling you, it was the most powerful thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it, to me it was a great big revival with a lot of people, thousands of people. But, some, but, but I saw lay people walking up to people, laying hands on them, and them falling out in the power of God. And, you, and it wasn't a fake and it wasn't a show. But then I started hearing reports later on where people were saying, we're going to go to Brownsville and we're going to take what we get and bring it back to our church and do what they're doing. You can't duplicate God, church. You can't duplicate a move of God. Pastors were going and getting, going down and supposedly getting refreshed and getting this anointing, taking it back to their church, and they were becoming another Brownsville. Man got involved with this revival, and it died. I firmly believe the way that I know God that if man would have left it alone, it might still be going on today. There was a, a revival in Toronto, Canada called the Toronto Blessing. You can read about it. Many things happened, but out of that revival, pockets of people went to other churches and started doing just crazy things, barking like dogs, howling like wolves, roaring like lions. People said, oh, I had, I had fillings in my mouth and God put gold teeth in instead of fixing them. 
Don't play with God. Don't play with God. Can he do that? Absolutely. Was it necessary? No. Man gets involved with things and God has to get out of the way of it. As long as we let him be in the way and, stay, and be the way and have his way, you ain't got to load up and go to Kentucky. You ain't got to go up to Cleveland, Georgia, to Lee College, which is the Church of God University that it's broke out into. You ain't got to load up and go to these places. Because if you go and your heart's not where it needs to be, you're going to come back the same way. You're just going to be do. You're going to go for a show. And that's what people are, some people are doing. They're going, they're trying to mimic this thing. They're trying to copycat this thing. I'm here to tell you, the God that's in, that's in Ashbury College, the God that hit Lee University, the God that hit these other universities, is the same God that's in this building right now. I don't need to go manifest something. I don't need to go experience something. What I need to experience is a move of the Holy Ghost. And I didn't say Holy Spirit. We, we, we've, we've, we've changed. We've changed our definition of things. If you ask people in the modern times, hey, what's revival? Shouting, dancing. I love those things. I love those things. But because there's a revival with a bunch of college students who are just singing a cappella at times, worshiping God, praising God, <laughs> exuberating themselves, repenting. And God's, you know, people, there may have been healings. They're not recording this stuff. It's not documented. They're not there to, be, to bring publicity to themselves. They said, we don't want the light. We want people to see the light. So we have our own definition of revival. And, what, and listen, here's what's happened with the church. And I'm not talking about just the, our church. I'm talking about every church. I'm talking about the church, his church. What's happened with revival is that we, we expect it to be a certain way. And when God don't do it that way, we want to criticize it. Another revival happened actually in this book. 120 people got together in one mind and one accord and went to an upper room. And for 10 days, they didn't have their own agenda. For 10 days, they didn't care what people thought. For 10 days, they didn't worry about food. For 10 days, they didn't worry about nothing. They went and sought what Jesus promised. And, in, and on one particular day, a wind blew through that city. I think everybody heard it. Cloven tongues of fire set on their head. They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And 3,000 people were saved. Tell me that's not revival. I had somebody tell me a long time ago that churches don't need revival. A revival needs something from dead people. No, a church needs to be revived in who, what, who God really is and what God has done. And sometimes a revival can be a reminder. You know, this ain't the first time this happened at Ashbury College. It happened in 1970. A, another move of God. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Do we want revival? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to hear the phrase revival's coming because it's here. It wouldn't be in these colleges if it wasn't here. I even said something last week that it's going to be pretty interesting when some of these students start going out and, and ministering and somebody said, you're going to bring them to your church? And I said, well, probably. I said, but I may not have to because he's already going to be here before they get here. I don't need somebody to come in. I don't mind it, but I don't have to have somebody come in. If I have to get somebody to, man to bring God in here, then I'm manufacturing it. When I can get on my face. After COVID-19, I preached a message to this church on steps of revival. And I preached from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And the first thing that God says in that text, if my people will call by name, will humble themselves. Revival brings 
humility. It takes your shame and it does away with it. It takes your arrogance, your pridefulness, and it buries it. And it makes you say, God, I'm going to go fall on the, on the altar and break myself before you so you can put me back together. Do we want revival? Are we willing to pay what it costs? I'm about to get in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble. Because I'm tired of people thinking they can live in sin and God can bless them. Fornication is a sin, church. Adultery is a sin, church. Gossip is a sin, church. Bitterness is a sin. Unforgiveness is a sin. If we don't repent and get our hearts prepared before God, we're not going to see him move like he's moving in other places. I'm talking people or people that had 20 years of anger and again, we're, we're repenting and losing and reconciling with family members through some of these revivals. You know, we, we, we love the drug, addict, the drug addict being delivered. Believe me, I'm, I'm former there. I'll never forget my deliverance. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And I'm grateful for it. But that's not me anymore. I'm grateful that he pulled me out of that. But, and, but we, 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 we want to brag about that, but telling you some of the greatest victories in revival is when people reconcile their lives back together. Marriages, families, what, who, friends, whatever. When relationships are restored back to being holy before him. There's nothing like reconciling with someone. So we, we put that to the backside. Well, that's just minor. No, it ain't because it's family and God's all about family. Justin Franklin wrote a book, Love Like You Never Been Hurt. Yes, what we know is that they met for a chapel service on a Wednesday. Do we know how long they've been praying for this? Do we know how many nights they fasted and wept and cried before God for a real sovereign move of God? We're at a place where I believe with all my heart. Church. That Jesus could come at any moment. I want to share something with you, and I, I don't have documentation to read it from. It was shared with me. And it wasn't shared in private. It's, it's public knowledge. I'll have to find it to get it printed, and I can put it in your hand. I told you sometime, I think, last year, that Israel had had five red heifers brought to them. Y'all remember me telling you that? Four of those have been dismissed. They found a, a, a different color hair, a blemish, or something. But the fifth one is perfect. What does that mean, Pastor? Watch Israel. It's very significant in Scripture what that red heifer is for. It's inspected daily. Nobody can touch it. Can't put hands on it. It has to be a certain age. But it's very substantial that out of five, four of them have already been dismissed. But there's one that has passed every test. That's just one sign. Another sign is that I, I look at it around, I see how the world, when Jesus said in Matthew that well, as it was in the days of Noah, people are living life 
but they're full of corruption and full of evil. God flooded the earth because people's hearts were evil. I just read the other day, Columbus, Georgia, an hour and a half from here. There was a party going on and something broke out and it spilled over into a gas station, a shell gas station parking lot. Five teenagers were shot, including a five-year-old boy. Huh? Well, when I read it, it was five. Including a five-year-old kid. Just because somebody, just, somebody just was hateful. We're in a time. And I believe these revivals are for, have one purpose. Yes, it's for people to know that God is God. And there is no substitute for God. But I also believe it's this. He's getting his bride ready for departure. He's given us this last move. I've always believed in the great awakening. I've always believed in, a revi in, in revival coming. I still believe there's the end time harvest. But I believe our time is getting short. We must be diligently about the Father's business, church. I heard someone that I don't even know was sharing with his church a vision, or maybe he was maybe it wasn't a vision. It was something that he was praying about, and God spoke it. And he and he made this declaration. He said, "I believe that 2023." Now, some of you Pentecostal folks, don't, don't get crazy on me. He said, I believe 2023 is the year of soul winning. Amen. Now, that may not mean nothing to you, but it resonated so much in my spirit because that's what that's all about. There's people on, there, on that cross that are not saved, but I believe are going to be. Will be. Revival fire is on us. And when man starts mixing his self in it, like the sons of Aaron, in Genesis, I think it's Genesis. Let me look. I, wanted to, I don't want to tell you wrong. I want to make sure I tell you the right thing. Go this way. Ha, there we are. No, I'm sorry, it's in Leviticus. It's in Leviticus, I'm sorry. God had given Moses the formula on, 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 on the, to put the spices and the stuff together for the fire to go on the altar to burn the, to burn the sacrifice. Aaron's sons decided they were going to create their own. And they offered up God's strange fire, and they died. These people better be careful trying to step into this move of God, trying to mock this move, trying to make fun of it because it's not like they see it. It's not like how they think it should be. I'm not telling you I'm, not, I'm against evangelists or against singers. I, I'm not against none of those things. But when God's the only focus, <laughs> this is so much, it's a be, so much better picture. Because sometimes we can get lost in a, a speaker or a worship leader. I'm honored for this today. I am so excited when they come. I love live worship. I, I, there's nothing like it to me. But I'm here to tell you, this pastor was very leery and we lost our worship leader. I'm still asking God why Jordan moved. I, don't, you know, I still don't believe it's God's will. It was. It was. It was. But I said, God, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, this is, I don't, I don't like this. This is, you know, this is like, 
we're singing words up there, but it's Carrie Job or it's Bethel or it's Elevation or somebody's singing and we're just singing with them. And that, you know, like God, I just don't know if that's going to work. Was I wrong? Had a missionary one time sitting in that back booth, came through, done some stuff for me before we got our new equipment. He was sitting in that booth and he said, after service, he goes, Pastor, I go all over the world. I really go all over, I go all over the states. I have churches in every state that supports us. And he's a media tech guy. He, he, you know, he says, I've been in churches that run 3,000. I've been in churches that run 1,500. I've been in churches that have some of the, that their worship team has created albums, which is fine, which is great. What's wrong with that? He said, I've been with some of the most professional people, musician-wise. He said, but I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to hear me. I have never felt God any stronger than I have in this church with nobody on the platform. Somebody in Ashbury College will get up there. I'm not going to sing, but they'll get up there. <laughs> and they'll start breaking out in a chorus. And the entire place erupts in praise. Just erupts in worship. Sometimes there's a keyboardist or piano player. Sometimes there's a guy with a guitar. A lot of times it's a cappella. There's no music. They're just worshiping. And they're, they're not even paying attention to anybody or looking they're just they're lost they're on their face they're on the altar they're they're laying on the floor they're they're if it's a great if it's a real group powerful song they're all jumping and just i mean it just exuberant praise there was another revival that took place that actually started our pentecostal movement it's called in azusa street in Los Angeles, California. When a little black minister about this tall, seriously, Richard Seymour, stood on a Coca-Cola crate because he couldn't see over the pulpit, got up there and began to preach. <laughs> and the power of God fell in that place. They began to speak in tongues. They began to prophesy. They began to cast out devils. They began to heal and pray over the sick, and the sick were healed. This, this place was, that little corner of Azusa Street right there was it's a little mission house is what it was and it became the most powerful move of Pentecost recorded in history in that time of that revival breaking out people would go down the road and throw tomatoes and eggs at these people they said it got so strong that where that corner I've been standing in that corner there's a plaque right there I've been standing I stood there and there's a plaque with the name of it Zusa Street Revival and there's, there's different places that recognize different things. They said that people would go on the other side of the street so they wouldn't have to walk beside the tent. They'd cross the street. And as they crossed the street, the conviction pulled them back into the tent. That revival sparked the Pentecostal movement. Because in that revival, there were not Pentecostals, there were not Baptists, there were not Methodists, there were hungry people looking for God. And when, they bur when that was birth, that revival stayed exactly what it was. You know why? Man never got involved. Here's what I'm scared of. told you this is different for me because I am I'm only speaking what I feel the Holy Spirit speak all I did was write down scriptures and I didn't even read them to you here's what I'm afraid of that if man gets involved in these places they're going to try to duplicate it copy it Should I say it, Steve? 
No, what I said to you Sunday. I mean Saturday at breakfast. Let me tell you what I felt the Holy Spirit just prompted my spirit. People today in church treat God like crack cocaine. Hear me out. They come get a fix on Sunday and they don't worry about it the rest of the time. God don't work that way, folks. He's not some quick fix. These kids in North Carolina, in Kentucky and Cleveland, Georgia, these other colleges, these I told you one of them was in Jackson High School in Jackson, Georgia, down the street from us. I don't know how long these are going to last. I don't know how long they're going to... As long as God's in it, it'll last as long as they want to be there. But people want to be, get that quick fix and that quick feel, and then they go in and they get their feelings all felt up and they leave. Till they need it again. I was an addict for 15 years, and every time I needed to get high, when I did, I was good. Come on, you addicts, you know what I'm saying. I was good. Until I needed another one. Until I needed another one. And then when that one didn't work, I had to go get something stronger. They come and get God when they feel like, okay, I need God today. And, uh, okay, and they disappear. Till they need God again. When you get hungry and you're ready to surrender and you're ready to submit everything to him, write, take your piece of paper and wipe it clean and say, here God, write on me what you want. When you get to that place, revival is going to fall. I know churches that are doing certain things right now. I'll read about it. They want to open their church up for prayer. I, I don't have a problem with that. Somebody asked me, what are you going to do? What God says do. We got church tonight at 6 o'clock, okay? I have a message to preach tonight at 6 o'clock. We got church. If you can, be here. With all you can, be here. Why? Revival might happen tonight. I put on Facebook this morning, hey, God's moving across our land. I expect him to move at New Life Assembly this morning. But if you're not here, if you, can't, if you don't make it, then I guess you might not know he moved. I'm tired of reading about what God's doing, church, and I want to experience it. I'm ready. I'm ready. God's not some quick fix for me. I told my wife the other day, I was going down the road. Actually, I was going to Barnesville Thursday. I do a devotion down there for my second church. They tell me I'm their pastor. I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm, maybe I am, but it's just, just a living place. By the way, Pam, Tammy, Betty, Barbara says, hey. Every time I go in there, she's like, that's my pastor. I've been knowing him all my life. I'm like, no, she hasn't. About 12 years, but not all of her life. I was on my way. And, and I, I, listen, I, I'm not knocking any of you that listen to The Fish or K-Love or whatever. I'm not knocking it, okay? But Jordan, I got tired of hearing commercials. So I plugged my phone into my radio and I hit my worship set. And he broke me. I played a song, and I'm like, oh, I want to hear this song. And I hit that button, and I'm like, oh, Jeff, stop. You're going to get right to trouble. Every morning I come to this building, I go to my office, I turn my light on, I go to my desk, I hit my computer, and I hit my worship set, and I sit there. And I'm not trying to, I'm not boasting myself, but church, I'm, I can't get enough. I told my wife, I said, I don't know, God's doing something. She goes, I know, I see it. I can't get enough. I'm not satisfied with status quo anymore. 
I don't want to hear somebody talk about revival. I want somebody to experience revival. I want to see people post things on Facebook, what God's doing in Griffin, Georgia. I want to hear what people, I want to hear people talk about, what, oh man, that little church over there across from the bread store, uh, they just took over the bread store. Think about this for a minute. Think about this for a minute. Just think about if somebody come up to you at the racetrack gas station. Now, I heard this from another preacher. I'm going to use it. I'm not trying to duplicate him, but I'm just going to bring it to our community. Just think if somebody came up to you at racetrack or at Ingalls, at your pump of gas, and they come up to you and they said, Hey, Steve, where's the revival? Or what church is the revival at? And you say, which one? Just think. If they're like, well, was our, yeah, they're in revival. What about, yeah, they're in revival. What about, yeah, they're in revival. Where can I go? Choose one. It's not about Pentecost. It's not about sin with the God. It's not about church of God. It's not about Baptist. It's not about Methodist. It's about a move of God upon his people who are called by his name. If you'll humble yourselves and pray, seek my face. Quit asking God to give, give, give. Start seeking him for who he is and see what he wants you to give. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. There's humility, there's seeking God, and there's repentance. Those three things take place, truly take place. I don't mean something staged or something manufactured. See, we don't have control of the Holy Spirit. He has control of us. I want more, church. And I'll do whatever it takes to get it. If it means opening those doors 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so be it. I'll be here some of those times. I'll go home, eat, take a shower, come back so I don't stink. But I want to be in his presence. I want to be on, I want to be, I want want more. I'm I'm done with what we've done. I'm done with what's, there's more. I'm seeing more. I want more. I expect more. Who wants it? Who wants it? Who's ready? Do you know something? One of the, one of the biggest failures in the church. And I, I know I called out some things earlier that were sin. But one of the most disappointing sins to me is disobedience. When I know God's expecting something, but I won't do it. Your pastor and his wife were not going to be perfect, but we're going to be obedient. And if he says, come pray, you'll find me praying. If he says, come in here and worship, you'll find me worship. He says, get into the word, I'll get in the word. If he says, Jeff, pastor, or son, I want you to go over there. And I need you to grab that alcoholic. And I need you to pray the demon off of him. I'll go do it. I, I've, never, I've, I've always believed in witnessing. I've always been, believed in being bold. A lot of times now, when I leave, I go to places. We went to go eat last night, and Jordan was teasing me because the waitress just knew who I was. And I'm like, well, when you're famous in a restaurant, you're only there for one reason, because you're a fat boy and you like to eat. So, <laughs> But I've, I've started to realize that some of those people who come to your table are broken, scattered busted tore to pieces and sometimes you know you just say hey how you doing 
I'm okay. Turn Jesus on. Oh, that's in a public place, yeah. That's where he wants us to be in a public place. He don't want us to hide anymore. It's time to get out and expose ourselves, church. I'm not ashamed. He said, if you deny me before men, I deny you before my Father in heaven. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God. The cross still makes a difference. We sang, I speak Jesus. That name still has a meaning. The only thing I want to read is this. I want to read this because it, it's so true. And, and I don't want us to get lost just in this passage. But I want us to understand this passage in the book of Mark. is speaking to New Life Assembly. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven and sat at supper. Mark 16, verse 14. And he reprimanded them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. This is the disciples. Because they did not believe those who had, been, who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. These are the signs will accompany those who believe. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, you'll cast out devils. Go back, go back. Accompany, no, accompany those who believe. In my name, you'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents and they'll drink anything deadly. Now listen, he's not talking about snakes right there. He's not talking about going picking up a, a rattlesnake and it biting you and you're not getting, yeah, it will hurt and you'll get sick. He's talking about demonic spirits. You take up and drink anything and it by no means will hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. Now that's not just, to me, that's just not revival. That's everyday living. Church, it's time. It's time. I know the enemy has authority on this earth because God gave it to him. Because God gave it to him, he can't take it away from him, at least not right now. There's a time for that. I know the enemy has power because God gave it to him. It's limited, but he has it. Don't, don't question yourselves and fool yourselves at the end that Satan isn't powerful because he is he took two thirds of heaven with him or one third of heaven with him to be his demons the enemy is on one mission and I've told you this and I, I got to repeat myself Nobody in this room that I think right now would walk out this door and Monday morning go down to United Bank and rob it. I don't think you would. I don't think anybody would walk out of here and go to get your gun and go down the street and shoot somebody. I don't think you would do that. Enemy can't, probably can't make you do that. But if you doubt God, he can defeat you. It's not about 
doing things. It's about doubting what God says he's going to do. All the enemy's trying to do is stop what God's doing in your life. Catch this for somebody, maybe Facebook. Catch this. We're going to close, but catch this. Satan does not have discernment. Did you hear me? He might know your past, but he has nothing to do with your future. He's that, he can't discern. Right now he's going bananas because he don't know. Ricky, he don't know what God's about to do in your life. He doesn't know what God's next step plan is or what God's next step is. He's about to go insane in himself because he's like, what are you going to do with Summer? I don't know what you're going to do, so i got to stop her from trying to get to it. But when you persevere, you put him under your feet where he belongs. He has nothing. I know it's an old cliche, and I know it's old, and I know it's silly. But it was said to me by a youth pastor, pretty powerful youth pastor back in the days. We were youth pastors. He said, the next time Satan says, remind you of your past, remind him of his future. Because right now, hell is his destination. I I know, I know y'all going to get, y'all going to, be critical on me here, but I know you didn't prepare it. I know you didn't plan it. I know you didn't practice it. But there's a song that I've not been able to get away from, and it's called King of Glory. Do you know it? Do you have it? I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know. You don't want me to sing that. Put the words up there. Put the words up there. King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. C.C. Winans sings it. Huh? You know who it is? You don't know it. There's the song. There's the words. I just wanted to end with that song. Because I just feel that that's where I want to be, right there, church. This is where I want to be. You don't know it? Huh? They can play it. They can play it. It don't matter. It's okay. Okay? Huh? I know, we're Pentecostal church. I was talking to somebody the other day about when I was in church, we used to have an overhead. We had the, the, the sheets that we had to put the words on the screen. I said in the Pentecostal church, sometimes they're going to sing verse 1 12 times. After the ninth time, you done lost verse 1, you can't find it, so it's like y'all just have to memorize it because... You know, you never know what's going to happen. To find it? Huh? I don't like the delay. I know, it's not their fault. Because I'm going to start talking, I'll keep preaching. I don't want to keep preaching. Pastor, while they're doing that, uh, last night I was uh, praying for a scripture. God to let me focus on for today. And I've been from Psalms 1, uh, 113. This is now, this is from the Amplified. The Lord exalts the humble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise our servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised with all inspired reverence. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? He is enthroned on high. 
who humbles himself to regard the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap, that he may sit uh, he, that he may seat them with princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman live in the house as a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Now, when I go to the message version of this scripture. Hallelujah, you who serve God, praise God. Just to speak his name is praise. Just to remember God is a blessing, now and tomorrow and always. From east to west, from dawn to dusk, keep lifting all your praises to God. God is higher than anything and anyone, outshining everything you can see in the skies. Who can compare with God, our God, so majestically enthroned, surveying his magnificent heavens and earth? He picks up the poor from out of the dirt, rescues the forgotten who've been thrown out with the trash, seats them among the honored guests, a place of honor among the brightest and best. He gives childless couples a family, gives them joy as the parents of children. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We ready? Amen. All right, y'all stand. I know. We're out, of, we're out of the norm, but you know what? It don't matter. It don't matter. I just... I play this song almost every day, every morning, because it's just my heart. Kill this mic, CJ. Yes.
Hallelujah. Before you leave, Jordan has something he wants to speak to the church just for just a brief moment. Well, isn't God good? I um, just want to thank you guys for welcoming us back today. Um, our plan is to, to come join you guys several times throughout the year. Because, because we ready. just feel that there's something burning inside that's got to get out. Come on. You know, and yeah, we have a home church, but at the same time, you know, there's only so much you can do in one place. And we're called to reach out to others and to go and do, right? Yep. And so that's what we want to do. Um, but on a side note to that also, um, you know, this church has always been part of us as well. And when we, when we heard what had happened back in January, um, where the tornadoes came through and leveled stuff and took out things, uh, something just started tugging on me and some others. And so we were talking, oh, we were yeah. praying. And we're like, well, you know, we've got to do something. Because that's, that's part of our door. heart, too. They can give one away out. Um, and so our church, we, we talked to Pastor, and our church um, said, well, we can do something. Don't know what, but we can do something to help. So they prayed, they talked, board talked, yeah. people talked. We're gonna do it I shared what had gone on and, and how close we are to you guys and, and this church and Pastor Jeff and Deb. <clears throat> and they said, you know, we can help. And um, so through, through discussion and talking and um, prayer and whatnot, um, let me do, and, and, and I'll tell you this too, <laughs> it's no, um, it's no surprise or, or shock to me either that our church is abundant life. And you are new life. So let that sink in just a minute. Um, so you have a sister church in coming Georgia. Abundant life. Your new life, feeling that new life, and we're abundant life, keeping it going. And let me tell you what, I was telling Pastor Jeff this this week. Um, there was a few weeks ago and I think Crystal was on the team that week, we had a great worship service. I'm talking, worship was going. You know what I'm talking about. And I get home, look on Facebook, and I talk to him, the same thing's happening here. God is moving. And that's when he started tugging even more, and that's why when I talk to him, we got to do we got to do more stuff. Um, so between prayer and the people at the church and talking with the pastors, we are here today to
we're here today to present you guys, and I've got some more here in a minute, $2,300. They're gift cards. I have a couple hundred dollars cash, but these, you guys can do what you can do here, and we're providing it to you so you can go and reach the people right where they are. I know you do a lot already, but we wanted to be that hand also from abundant life to new life for you guys to do what you need to do. We love you and thank you. And when his people come together, we can accomplish much. Chris Wainton, thank y'all. I know y'all were part of the church as well. And, uh, and Lindsay. No oh, quiet Lindsay. <laughs> Except when you go eat dinner with her, she's not quiet. <laughs> uh, I'm overwhelmed. I, I'm, I'm just, I, you know, <laughs> he told me, he said, with, with, you know, people's offered him brand new dishwasher, brand new washer and dr or, or dryer, and just other items. You know, somebody had a bed, and we're going to just give a whole bed away. I mean, I'm like, well, I don't have nowhere to put it on anybody that needs it. So if anybody needs that stuff, let me know. I'll pass it on. I mean, I think if it's still available. But he said, you know, you know, what will gift cards work? And I go, gift, gift cards are great because we can, you know, we don't have to you know, transfer anything, you know, here and there. So I had no idea <laughs> it was going to be this. Thank you. I will, I need to get your address to your church and write your pastor a card. Um, kingdom work. It's kingdom work. Stand with me. We're going to go home. After... After, you know, we've been here all day. On your way out, Steve's holding the basket. And what he asked me to tell you to do was fill it up. He's got two, so if you fill both of them up, you'll be double blessed. No, do what you can. We're, we're, we're grateful for your faithfulness and your giving. Um, if you got the blessing queued up, can you, if not, huh? Okay, then don't worry about it. We won't do it today. We, are, we know what it means. We know what it says. <laughs> I want you to do something before we give. I want you to just close your eyes. Put your, hand, put your hands toward facing you. No, facing you. Like touch, touching your heart. Everybody put your hands toward. Now I want you to say this. Lord, Lord. King of glory, King of glory. fill this place. <laughs> Father, we thank you this morning for your presence in this house. We thank you, Lord, that you have touched and you have moved. And, you, and Lord, once again, we can say it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Now bless your people as we leave this place. Bless our tithes and offerings as we give to you freely and cheerfully. Let it be an abundance of blessing on your people. Lord, that we are faithful with what is given and that we are good stewards with what is sown. Now, Father, bring us back tonight as we come back to worship, to be back in your presence again, and to hear your word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give Anthony and Crystal and Jordan Lindsay another hand? Thank y'all. Thank y'all. On your way out, Steve's got a basket. Fill it up.